My name is Scott Camp and I'm with Aquatic Source. I'd like to thank MSBO for giving our company a chance to speak. I think that uh, you'll find the information extremely valuable. Bill Babcock has years in our industry and has so much wealth of experience to share with everybody. And also Nick Shelton, and again, years and years of experience. Nick on, on the other side has done so much for what's going on with this COVID-19 virus in our organization and how we are handling things that I know when they start talking about managing swimming pools during shutdown and beyond, it's just going to be a great wealth of information. I also would like to thank all of our great clients for supporting us through these tough times and helping us navigate the different things that we run into with swimming pools, getting in the indoors open and the outdoors open and all the things that it's taken to get to where we're going to be back and swimming soon. So again, thanks and Aquatic Source thanks you. Hello everybody. Thank you Scott Camp for that wonderful introduction and welcome to Managing Swimming Pools During Shutdown and beyond. During this course, we've sort of taken our three objectives, which were determining steps to take to reopen pools after extended shutdowns was objective number one. Objective number two, repair, prepare for health department concerns. Objective number three is understand what to expect when reopening. We've kind of broken this down into five steps and we've rolled objective number two and objective number three together. So through this, these five steps in preparing to open up your swimming pool after a period of time of shutdown, whatever that period of time is, we're gonna go through those five steps in terms of your preparation to open and bring bathers back to the natatorium. Step number one. Step number one is contact your health department. Uh, many of you will have a health department that has an actual local, Oakland County, Macomb County, Wayne County are three to name a few that actually have local health departments that are going to be highly involved in getting your swimming pool back on track. Um, those of you that don't have a local, you will be deferring to Eagle, which is the, uh, the, the new MDEQ. We say it E-G-L-E now, so Eagle. I am highly recommending that as a part of any plan, the first thing that you do is get a hold of whoever your health department representative is and figure out where you are at in their paperwork process. Um, what are they, are they requiring for water samples? Are they going to require a complete reinspection of your facility? Are they going to require um, you to submit your COVID plan to them for approval before they even come out to your site? There's been little to zero guidance given from the governor on how we are supposed to go about doing this from a local level. So better to be safe than sorry. Let's make sure that we know what the people that are going to give us the green light to open that pool are going to expect before the day that we go to open that pool, right? So num step number one, let's get in touch with our uh, authorities that are having jurisdiction over our swimming pool and make sure that uh, we know what their expectations are uh, before we're ready to open. Which leads us to step number two, a COVID-19 plan in writing. We learned back in May when our seasonal pools, your country clubs, your municipalities, your water parks, your here on Clinton Metro authorities. All of these governing bodies were having a, a, a real challenge. We knew that opening was coming, but we didn't know what that meant. And many of the health departments, four in the, in the Detroit area, we had the Wayne County Health Department, Washtenaw County Health Department, Oakland County Health Department, and Macomb County Health Department were extremely helpful in helping their clients within their boundaries be prepared to open and come with a written COVID-19 plan for their facilities, which they implemented. Baylor loads were changed in terms of how many people were going to be allowed on your pool deck, how they were gonna implement social distancing outside of the swimming pool itself, locker rooms, uh, the common ingress and egress went through 
different channels as opposed to funneling everybody through a locker room on these outdoor pools. But it's going to be critical that at your facility you have a plan and that will be just part of your everyday inspections now just like what you're going to do for bloodborne pathogens and your standard operating procedures, your emergency action plan, what you're going to do in the event of fecal contamination. COVID is going to be another part of a written plan as to what you're going to do at your facility and it will be part of your yearly inspections that you, the health department inspector is, is going to look for and that plan needs to be posted so that everybody can see it, just like your emergency action plan, just like your, your uh, fecal contamination plan. You're now gonna have a COVID-19 plan designed specifically for your facility and part of your routine on a daily basis until things change. Step number three, um, a lot of you indoor facilities are not used to what we've just endured and the fact that you're not used to having your bodies of water, your systems shut off for extended periods of time. Many people opted instead of keeping the water in the swimming pools to actually shut them off, put them to bed so that they were saving energy. That's fine. What you have to understand though is you are going to run into all of the things when you turn that system back on that our outdoor clientele are used to experiencing yearly. Uh, typically we go through our Memorial Day push to where we're getting everybody ready for Memorial Day weekend, we wipe our brow, it's all over. Then we spend June right, fixing all of the stuff that breaks as that system kind of comes back on and uh, figures out what's wrong with it. This is the stuff that's going to happen. So you guys need to plan on, you know, not knowing specifically what is going to go wrong, but you need to have some float time when you're starting to build your schedule of how you're gonna reopen this pool to make sure that you've got time left or time in there for maintenance. Um, if you are not used to turning your pool back on or, or this, this entire process, you know, reach out to your local pool service provider, get their input on what some best practices should be, what you should expect. You know, this may be the time to pay for a service call and, and make sure that your staff and you understand what you should be looking for. A couple of things that, that, that pop up on our lists every year for outdoor clients, pumps, you know, pumps, especially pool pumps, they're constant duty pumps. They do not like being off, right? Those shaft seals, they dry out. Volute gaskets, they dry out. Gaskets dry out, especially after being exposed to chlorinated water and then drying out, they dry out rapidly. So when you turn your pumps back on, um, expect there might be some things going on with gaskets and seals that might be addressed. Now, if it is a shaft seal, please be aware, you folks that have big pumps, uh, 15 horsepower, 10 horsepower, 20 horsepower, those seals aren't sitting on a shelf somewhere, right? There can be long lead times associated with shaft seals for some of your guys' pumps. And with shipping and receiving, I'm sure most of you have dealt with the challenges um, of shipping and receiving with COVID, who knows when we can get them. So understand that pumps are a big deal. We all know we need them to move the water, but that's one of the first things that we look at that goes wrong when we turn a pool back on. Um, flow meters, those of you that have paddle flow, flow meters, now is a perfect time to pull that flow meter out of the return line. Make sure that paddle wheel is spinning free and clear and it doesn't have a bunch of gunk on it that got hard and, and crystallized or, or, or made it so that that paddle wheel can't turn anymore. We all know we need to illustrate that we're getting the appropriate flow for the health inspector. Make sure that your flow meters are free and clear of debris and are operating properly. Stenner tubes, injectors, um, squeeze tubes, all of this stuff associated with your peristolic pumps. Um, now might be a great time to change the tubing out if you haven't done so in a while because that stuff again, once it's not have, has liquid in it anymore, it gets brittle. Uh, the injectors could have crystallized and, and plugged up that are connected to the return line. I'm going to advocate that anybody that has a peristolic pump and your and your pump has, or your system has been off, change just change those squeeze tubes out. Get it off your list. They're inexpensive. Most of you know how to do it yourself. It's a, it's a cheap thing that you can do to just get it off of your list, but make sure that those, um, those stenter pumps are working good. All of your chemical feed equipment from CO2, you know, ordering CO2 goes without saying, but making sure that the injectors are clean, the regulators are working for your CO2, for your, your chlorinator, those of you that are using uh, CalHypo, make sure that those, uh, those trays are free and clear, 
clear, clear of debris. Now's a great time to clean your feeder before you put it back into service, right? Get that kind of stuff done before we turn the pool back on because all of this stuff that was in those feeders just got nasty, hard, and it's gonna make those systems really difficult to operate. Inventory chemicals, you know, make sure you have everything on hand that you're used to having on hand. Again, this is a time that you're probably not used to. So go through and, and do that gut check on what you've got inventory for on chemicals. And then the, the last thing that I would recommend, uh, and it'll kind of segue into the next, the next uh, step here, is backwash those filters, right? Um, sand filters can, you know, that sand can get hard. That media can get hard. Things can go wrong with backwash. If, if you can't backwash that filter or you're experiencing backwa backwashing issues, you really need to know that before you open, open that pool back up to the public because as we all know, if we can't clean those filters, your reopening is going to be very short when you can't get flow anymore. So those are, those are kind of the checklists. I encourage everybody, again, if you're going through this process, don't do it alone. There's resources out there. You all have your providers that you use. Get those folks engaged with you and have them be a part of this process. They're gonna be a, a second, third set of eyeballs for you going through something that you haven't gone through before. And you could spend a very small amount of money up front getting those folks involved that are gonna save you some really big headaches uh, if you try and go it alone. Which heads into stage four, or step four, your water. Water balance, we all know it's critical. What is our water balance? Temperature, total alkalinity, calcium hardness, pH, total dissolved solids. That's all part of our water balance. And if the water's not balanced properly, you then can run into problems. And for some of you school districts that aren't used to shutting your pool off and you're constantly maintaining your water balance throughout a calendar year, this is completely new to you, okay? Seasonal swimming pools that are open, only open for about 100 days a year are used to doing this every single spring. You've got to get your water balance. And you probably should get your water tested. And some of you, depending on what county you live in, it is mandated that you shut your pool down for an extended period of time, that you get your water tested and make sure that it is safe before you can open it to the public. Reference step one, right? <laughs> this, is, this is common for a seasonal swimming pool and you a, a lot of you folks are now going through this for the first time and never knew about You never shut your pool down. So you just went through the process of getting your water tested, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, quarterly, whatever your county requires you to do, you've never had this interruption before. Well, now that you have, getting started again requires you to do these things. Okay, so let's make sure before you let the public into our pool, let's make sure our water's balanced. Get it tested, which comes to our testing equipment. You now have had test kits with reagents just sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting, and there's a born on date for these reagents. We generally tell our seasonal clientele, when you close your swimming pool after Labor Day, throw your reagents out and buy fresh reagents in the spring. So you know you're getting the highest quality, accurate testing results that you can. These reagents weren't meant to last for a long time. So if now your reagents have been sitting around for the past six months doing nothing, toss them, buy fresh, get new reagents so that you can get the best and most accurate water testing results you have prior to opening, opening your pool back up to your clientele. Let's make sure that our signage is accurate and anything that got taken down after you close your pools, let's make sure they get put back up again. Let's make sure all of our life-saving equipment on the pool deck from your from your spine board to your head immobilizer to the straps to your rescue tubes to your throw ropes any other safety equipment that you know is mandated 
and goes through your yearly inspection, your test kits, your first aid kits. Let's make sure you didn't you didn't take out a bunch of band-aids and gauze pads and they didn't get replaced. Because trust me, when you get your yearly inspection, any of you who have been through it with your with the inspector, they go through your first aid kit and they literally count band-aids and gauze pads. And let's make sure you have everything up to the standard that is required to be open as a public swimming pool. Make sure your locker rooms have the appropriate signage you're going to have. And through a COVID plan, your health department might say, hey, we're avoiding locker rooms like right now. We're only going to have the swim team in here with their coaches, okay? And when they clean out, clear out, maybe you have a competitive swim team that's renting your pool come in. Or maybe you have a learn to swim program. But let's make sure we have our facility that has been now closed. When it's now ready to open, you have all of your safety, first aid, everything necessary water balanced and safe and warm and ready to swim in let's have all of that stuff done prior to letting the first person get into the body of water i think that's hugely important for all of you who are again are not used to having shutdowns like this step five is a tricky one but you know when everybody's building a schedule to try and figure out you know what's my start of this process and and, and when does my programming start when do people start to re-enter my facility we're big advocates here and, and we use this again with it we keep going back to our seasonal clients but again they're used to this process you know those folks are shooting for a memorial day weekend opening very very few of those folks go into that week before memorial day and don't have their, their pool open. We actually don't open many pools that week of Memorial Day because we're trying to get everybody ready so that the bugs can get worked out. Build yourself some time. I'd love to see everybody have five to seven days in their reopening plan after the system's on, the water's balanced, so that we can try and identify anything that's gonna go wrong, that could go wrong, this is going to give you guys time to set up your deck and your facility for that uh, complying with the COVID plan that you wrote with deck markings and, and get the staff used to how the flow of people through the facility is going to go. A trial run for anything is a good idea, right? Practice for anything is a good idea. This is not normal. None of this stuff that we're dealing with right now obviously is normal. So getting everybody in there for that, you know, that dry run at least once, twice, three times, and then letting that system come back to life and uh, giving us time to react to it before you've got 40 kids or 30 kids or whatever you're allowed in your facility back in there, I think is really important and is going to go a long way with your supervisors when things come up that you've allowed for time for us or your professional to react to them and make sure that we keep that opening date that we know you've all advertised and we know everybody's excited about you can keep that thing um, unimpacted. So those are our five steps. Weird times, Bill. It, 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 it is definitely. And, and, and for all of you out there, please, we're a resource. Whatever your resource is to help guide you through this, reach out to them. Ask questions. I'm available. Nick's available. Aquatic Source is available. Pick up the phone and call and ask questions. Don't just assume you're going to go through whatever it is you're going to go through and there aren't going to be issues because there are going to be. So so please reach out to the people who can help. And uh, this this whole thing, this whole COVID thing, there was no there's no playbook where we can go to page three and we know it's it's third and long and this is the you know this is what we're going to do and this down the distance okay we're we're sort of working our way through this whole thing just like everybody else is and we learned a great deal in the spring in trying to get our seasonal pools open from our health departments in terms of how things were gonna work moving forward. Well, we know what's gonna happen with your equipment moving forward when it's been sit sitting idle for a long time. There is a risk that there's gonna be 
there, there's going to be issues. And so let's get those things corrected as quickly as, as, as possible. And I speak, in, and Nick and I have both been talking between seasonal and year-round pools because most of, most of your indoor bodies of water are used to being functional and operational 12 months a year. The worst thing you might do is turn the heat off if you're not going to have somebody in the body of water for a couple for a couple of months until the swim season starts back up back up in august but you're never really turned the system off others have not only turned off their system people have drained their 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 pools so that there was no risk of a drowning somebody somebody getting into the natator so these are all things that swimming pools are not used to doing this so when you fill that pool back up with water and you turn that equipment on, there are going to be issues that you're going to have to handle. And there are, there are resources out there and professionals that can help you get through that because we all want our swimming pools open. We need the pools to be open. The kids need to be in the water learning to swim. Our competitive swimmers uh, who, have, who, who have been behind some other states uh, in, in, in terms of their competitive swimming. Our swim teams, those kids all want to get back in the water and want to get to work. And uh, we all want to, uh, we all want that for them and we all want this to be done as safely as possible. So feel free to, uh, to give a call and ask for help. If you're watching this, I think you guys have all taken the first right steps, right? You're actually caring about the right way to do this or looking for some guidance on doing something that you might have not done before. So. Congratulations and thank you for being proactive for uh, the people that patronize your, your pools and, and use them on a day-to-day -day basis. They're as excited to get back as I'm sure uh, you folks all are. Um, Bill and I are going to hang out on, online a little bit right now. If anybody is gonna, has any questions, I think the forum will be set up so that you can type in some questions. We'll, we're going to hang out for 10-15 minutes or as long as it takes if the questions keep flowing. If, if you have any specific questions or, or want to chime in, we'll be here uh, local and live and uh, we'll do the best to answer them or at least get your name and numbers so that we can talk to you offline and make sure uh, that we can help as necessary. So thank you everybody. Stay safe out there. Thank you everybody. Thank you MSVO and everybody be safe.